Why do people cheat on their spouses and is the situation hopeless? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Adultery is the only sin that has required two commandments out of the ten to remind us of its devastating consequences, one for the actual sin itself and the other for just thinking about it. It is a demon that torments. That's why in today's gospel, the woman cries out to Jesus, Lord, help me. It can lead to a broken marriage and dysfunctional children, from simple juvenile crimes, an unresolved affair as it cripples more marriages, may lead to an eventual decay of the moral and spiritual fiber of society, leading to irreversible regret on Judgment Day. Esther Perel is a prominent Belgian psychotherapist who has studied infidelity extensively and has advised couples for over 30 years. She says that infidelity can happen for various reasons. Either there is something wrong in our marriage or there is something wrong with us. But it has more to do with our own needs and unreconciled issues than with our spouse. It can be a desire for attention, to be listened to, to be cared for. It can also be an expression of emotional longing for novelty, for freedom, for acceptance, for power, for seeking reassurance that one is still whole and valued. When there is infidelity, the fragile vessel of trust is shattered completely unless you let the grace of God flow into it again. The obvious solution in our society is to leave the cheating person. Ironically, affairs are existent even with the divorce law. The sweet and glorious outcome of working together to make your marriage work is never achieved because we respond to problems only in human terms. After three long years of waiting, God bless us, son. I enjoyed my baby a lot until one day I noticed that most of the time my husband came home late at night and I remember the favorite line of my mother-in-law. It's normal for a lawyer to come home late. Don't wait for him. Matulog ka na lang. I just obey what she said since nakikisama din nako because we stayed in my in-laws place for almost eight years. It's so difficult called for a wife to live with in-laws even though they are kind. In 1991, we joined the CFC community. In 1992, God blessed us with new home. I was so excited to move in. In the same year, we are appointed as facilitators and became household leaders and then appointed as CLP service team head. Without me knowing, my husband pala has an extramarital affair. The reason why he attended pala the CLP is for him to cover up his wrongdoing. In 1993, my relative told me that she showed my husband with his girlfriend. When I confronted my husband, he denied it. I ignored rumors against him for I knew in my heart that he will not betray me because we were sweetheart for nine years. Until something unusual happened. It was a sunny afternoon when my husband was about to give talk pen in our CLP. For every word he uttered, flashes of lightning pattered, followed by the uproar of thunder, sending participants to cover including myself. The rain was so heavy as if shouting at my husband to stop talking. Miraculously, we were able to finish the CLP. Then I started stalking and discovered that my husband is not only an accomplished lawyer, but also an accomplished liar. I approached my household head to remove him from his service as household head and told him further that we can't accept anymore the role as a team leader for the next CLP. My husband was so angry at me and still denying it because we have no evidence at all. Finally, I saw and caught him thrice and I felt betrayed by the person whom I love so much. I prayed to the Lord every day to touch his heart and repent. I attended household meetings and teachings alone. I really don't know what to do. In the midst of this problem, I became pregnant miraculously after eight years. It was a mixed feeling because I want a second baby, but I asked the Lord, Lord, why now? Because of my condition, my husband lied again to me. He said that his relationship to his girl is over. On the ninth month of my pregnancy, I noticed that the baby has a slow movement. I went immediately to my ob for my regular checkup. And to my surprise, my doctor told me that I should be confined immediately. While in the delivery room, I began to cry and kept on muttering to the Lord my pain and hurt. Why, why all of this happened, Lord? I I really don't understand. I am serving you. I am people. You miraculously gave me a second baby and now you sudden, suddenly get it back. What will you get next, Lord? I had nothing left. After I gave birth to a dead baby, I lost 
everything, even my self-esteem. My husband continued his evil way. Three times a week, he came home late the following morning. Our situation became hopeless. In my sleepless, lonely nights, I cried so much to the Lord, asking Him to help me. I felt the Lord was carrying me and whispering to me that I am your father, I am your husband, and I am your best friend. I created you not to be miserable, but to be happy. Do not fear, for I am your God who is merciful and just. Stop changing your husband. Instead of worrying, be productive. I surrender everything to God. I can do nothing about my situation, serve my husband, even if it's against my will. Be kind to him always, even if he doesn't deserve it. My counselors has different point of view. Some said to let him go. Others said to continue praying for him. The Lord said to me, hold on my dearest child. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I realized that the pain and hurt aggravates because of my pride and self-pity. Unnoticeably, the death of my second baby is the rebirth of our new relationship. In the year 2000, Jesse accepted CFC service again as CLP team leader, became unit head, then chapter head, cluster head, then joined SGT as a top head, and now he is serving the Lord as sole sector coordinator. The God who loved me so much will never leave me even there are hundred reasons to give up. He will always find one reason to hold on. God is so faithful to his promises that what he has joined together, no human being must separate. Now our relationship is getting better every day and we are truly blessed. Our only son, Jemison, is now an ophthalmology resident doctor. God made us whole again. Forgiveness is a grace that will keep a marriage and a family whole. One may dwell on the hurt and betrayal or one may bask in the resulting growth and discovery of a rekindled relationship. Forgiveness of the person wronged and forgiveness from God must happen. If a couple is to survive an affair, constant spiritual and professional counseling must be sought and a deep and continuous renewal in one's spiritual life needs to happen to avoid a repetition. We need to watch out for telltale signs that our marriage is starting to break up. More importantly, we need to pray for ourselves to always be selfless and committed, giving our unconditional love to make our marriage work while praying the same for our spouses. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, please protect my marriage with your grace as I and my spouse work at it and pray for it. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.